entire universe once and for all. Welcome to a special bonus spoiler cast episode of Sketch Watch Play. This one focused exclusively on an Avengers Infinity War, which is has gone into wide release on this very day of recording. Uh, I am John Flurry, uh, and we are a twice a month geek pop culture podcast talking TV, film, cartoons, and video games. You can find us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, and most general podcast directories. Uh, please consider subscribing to us on your platform of choice to stay up to date. Follow us on social media at SketchWatchPlay on Twitter and Facebook.com slash SketchWatchPlay. And we encourage you to leave feedback on those, leave reviews on iTunes, or if you want, email us directly at SketchWatchPlay at gmail.com to tell us what you like, what you don't like, and even suggest possible topics for us to talk in the future. We will take those into consideration. Now, I had brought this up with Chris at the end of the last episode if you want to do this spoiler cast. This was not super high priority priority for him compared to I think Black Panther might be his only super high priority one. And he, but he's also been Chris has also been super busy lately, which is why we still have yet to record episode twenty seven, but we hope to soon. But thankfully, uh, we had a, we have a uh, previous guest co host, and by this show's standards, I can't think of anyone more qualified, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tyler Moliterno. How are you? I am good. Thank you for having me back. I'm very excited to to talk about this. There's movie. a lot to digest, but just a heads up. So. Uh, Tyler initially guest starred on episode 10 of the main show, which was uh, our opening topics were he, you and me discussed, we had both seen the Power Rangers movie reboot. Uh, Mm -hmm. We inadvertently ended up talking about some of the WWE, like Hanna-Barbera crossovers they've been doing because you are a big wrestling fan. Amazing. And And I'm a a big wrestling fan. I'm an even bigger fan of Scooby-Doo wrestling crossovers. (laughs) Um, Or at Scooby-Doo slash Wacky Races. Oh, of course. Or Love Big it. Show establishing like a 1984 dystopian future for the Jetsons. Uh, oh my God. But the main, <laughs> the main bulk of that episode, because we always, the regular episodes start out with, we just discuss some recent media and then we dive into our main topic. And since we always had our guest shoes, uh, Tyler had a great idea to talk the Marvel Cinematic Universe as a whole, specifically the movies. Uh, Netflix TV shows can wait for another day. So we talked everything up to that point. Worth noting that we hadn't talked, um, because they were not yet, we didn't talk Ragnarok, we didn't talk Homecoming, Guardians 2, uh, Black Panther, or of course this. So you saw it last night, probably one of the first people uh, to see it outside of uh, preview screenings, because, you know, some theaters do open, in, open the, the big movies on Thursday night. Uh, mm-hmm. And oh, before we dive into Infinity War, just a quick reminder for uh, you to be able to plug some of your personal projects in your own podcast, because that's how I discovered oh, yeah. you in the first place. Yes, I have uh, I, I have been doing Generation Animation, which is a podcast on the Fan Off Network for quite some time now. Uh, I feel like it's, I think it's around five years, I think we're coming up on. Um, like yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is uh, a show all about animation. We talk about cartoons, uh, whether they're animated movies or TV shows or uh, stop motion animated counts, anything or music CGI, videos, or like music cartoons. videos. Yes, we've done, we've done, we did a uh, music video, uh, a couple of music video episodes where we all pick music videos to talk about. We did a Homestar Runner episode. Yes, that's a good one. Uh-huh. Newgrounds episode. Oh, yeah, yeah. A uh, ton, of, ton of different things on there. And then we've even started doing. Um, topic episodes too where yeah. we just discuss the, just something in general two good um, ones that i would recommend are you talked uh move like live action adaptations of cartoons oh yeah uh and i guess it's more still a specific show but you did one that was comparing both the nickelodeon and disney doug and their pros and cons oh that was a fun one yeah that was, really that was one, one that we definitely wanted to it actually makes that me was like want, on the books for a while it actually makes me want to rewatch the disney doug because i don't hate it like a lot of people do but i was more mm-hmm. indifferent to it while i would like marathon the nick one so thank you for that but that's yeah. not your only podcast anymore, I believe. It is not. No, I have a couple of new podcasts uh, that I've started. So, um, yeah, this is plug time. So uh, I'll plug my newest podcast first. Uh, I just started a podcast recently where my sister and one of her friends from college talk about Survivor every week. It's called Snuffed. Um, and current season of Survivor, it's called ghost island and all of these artifacts that have been used in the show that people you know like an advantage or something that somebody got that they misused or ended up being eliminated without using are all back and they're scattered across the island and all these new players are coming across them and they have to try to reverse the curse and there's this haunted island and it's nuts and so we basically were like we want to we want to talk about survivor let's talk about 
this new season because it seems like it's a lot of fun and it really I, is it's a good it's a good season to get into if you don't watch survivor because you learn a lot about the history while you watch it i may have to legit my mom does not typically listen to podcasts but over the past couple of years she has become addicted on like all of her tv time is reality shows so it's survivor amazing <laughs> yeah. race and like project runway and all the gordon ramsay stuff uh <laughs> and i think she because they're on hulu she's mar- she's pretty much caught up on survivor and amazing race and i'm sure she's watching this new season so i'll pass that on but uh, it's not your only new podcast i believe no, yes. I, coming up uh, about a year ago, I started another podcast. It's called The Breakdown. I love doing generation animation, but like my, my biggest passion is talking about movies. Um, In general. And so, yeah. And so what we what I started was a podcast uh, with Alex Gris and uh, Zach. Um, <laughs> oh, God, I'm blanking on Zach's Zach name. Yes, yeah, Zach Alphanakis. No, it's Zach Kindred. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, Zach Kindred and Alex Christ, uh, two uh, mostly internet friends of mine. Zach, I've known for a while from when uh, Community was big. That's how we got to know each other. And I'm trying to remember, uh, is Alex... Zach the one who does the Disney Channel podcast? No, that's Zach Heltzel. That's a different, different Zach that that's I a great do concept. podcasts with. <laughs> Every week you review a Disney Channel original movie. Oh, yeah. And he just did this this whole big, uh, when all the brackets were populated, this big tournament to, mm. to put together. Uh, who won? Uh, it was surprisingly Halloween Town, the first one. Yes, it was Halloween Town versus Xenon was the final two, and okay. Halloween Town I won by I Halloween think... Town two more. But I picked the first one over. I, I don't know. I'd have to rewatch them. Uh, oh yeah, I, I mean, I, they're, they're, when, it, when it got down to it, it, it got really hard because there were so many good ones. But Halloween whole, Town, I, I think, on won team. by one vote. I if, think. if I had, because I wa- I mainly watched a bunch of the original batch, I would be on either Team Smart House or Team uh, Luck of the Irish. Oh yeah, both of those made it pretty far. I think surprisingly far because I think they're, those are are two that people really love. Smart and, House was uh, directed by Lavar Burton. That always blows my mind. Oh my god, I think I knew that in the back of my head somewhere. Oh, I, <laughs> I knew about it since about the that. beginning because when Disney Channel would always show in commercials like their uh, some behind the scenes stuff, and they touched on that. They showed him directing and brought up how cool it was working for him. So thanks, Lavar. Uh, but yes, so uh, listen to the breakdown. Uh, you're, yeah. I think, you're on most podcast directories. And what is the name of the or, Survivor one again? Snuffed, yeah. And Breakdown, you can find it's everywhere. It's on Spotify. It's on Stitcher. It's on iTunes. You can find it pretty much anywhere you want. And it's uh, basically what we do on that show is we we, we talk about the top 10 uh, in the box office for the previous week. We uh, review a movie. Sometimes we review movie theater candy. Uh, we okay. give recommendations for stuff. And um, we talk about news. It's just a very, very current uh, look at what's happening in film and yeah, movies. Yeah, I've listened to a couple, and yet you kind of, it's actually structurally a little like us because you save your main review for the later portion, and mm-hmm. a lot of it is is, is the, the open portion are more kind of like, who knows, what, like what's whatever you guys want in terms of topics and reviews or news. Yeah, just what, and, and a lot of it is like discussing uh, kind of like the, the, I, I don't want to say theoretical nature of the box office, but a lot of it's things like, you know, when you have a movie like uh, it and movie like a quiet place, these are mo- horror movies that in get out. I think I'd put in the same category yeah. that do insanely well. They're horror movies and they get good reviews and they made an insane amount of money. Yeah. Cause I well, think so long horror is in the middle of like a Renaissance. It feels it is. For yeah, so and long, I, it was just mostly pulpy trash and you had to look at yeah. stuff for good horror. And now we're seeing a shift and that makes me happy. I think the 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 theory, and this is like kind of the stuff that we talk about on the show. The theory, I think, by the studios is let's throw out some trashy, poppy horror stuff that we can spend like like minimum a million dollars on, and then we'll put it in the box office. We'll make like twenty million or whatever. That's a ton of profit. Mm-hmm. But uh, what it, the the new kind of thing that's happening is people are putting together really great movies. I think those three movies that I mentioned, they're not just good horror movies. They're good movies. And that, two of them directed by the most unlikely of people. John Krasinski yeah, John Krasinski and, and uh, Jordan Peele. Yeah, comedy Of guys. all people. Yeah, and, and, it, and it makes a difference. Now Bill Hader is going to be in It, it looks like, the next one. Oh, and, it's one of the adults? Yeah. Um, so it's, I think comedy and horror are these two genres that awesome. for a um, like, yeah, and I actually credit or people didn't put a lot of work into them, but it's starting to change. Yeah, I actually haven't seen most of those movies yet, but I know that Get Out has a heavy ho- comedy slant as well. Uh, yeah, and Peter's so does it. It's like a very funny movie. Like, it's scary, but it's got a lot of humor and a lot of heart. Yeah. And Quiet Place doesn't sound like it's a comedy at all. No, there's nothing really funny happens in A Quiet Place. It's a pretty all serious right. movie. <laughs> so, yes, listen to these podcasts. And also, uh, drop your Twitter handle for us, please. Yeah, uh, I am at Tyler Moliterno on Twitter. That's at 
uh, Tyler, Mo, Leader, No. Uh, and you'll know it's me because my name is Tyler Swift. So <laughs> I think Dave mentioned once how many people have misspelled Taylor Swift's name and been like, who's this guy? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, the original, uh, like, because when I first started experimenting with my name, I, I had this tweet where I was complaining because uh, I, I had came to the realization that, like, there's this guy, his name is Hosier. He's a, a musician, and everyone just accepts that his name is Hosier. But, like, if I called myself Hosier, if I was like, oh, my name's Hosier, people would be like, fuck off. <laughs> like, <laughs> nobody, nobody would call me that. So for a while, I changed my name to Hosier on Twitter, and then everybody would, like... Fuck See off. that I like their tweet, and they get really excited because they think Hosey would like their tweet. <laughs> and I was like, no, it's just this this asshole. And then I changed it to Tyler Swift because it sounds like Taylor Swift, and I thought right, it was right, funny. Right. All and right, it's kind of so, stuck. It's been it's been like that for a while now. So yes. I think it's kind of my my uh, my brand. Yes. Now, okay, let's get to the meat of discussion and why everybody. Mm. I think everybody clicked on this download. Uh, yes. So starting off, uh, now we are both big Marvel fans. We've seen all the movies up to this point. And mm-hmm. generally enjoy them a lot. Uh, it is funny that all three of us on the, on the previous episode, we ranked them and we all put Witcher Soldier as number one. Uh, yeah. Whose directors came back for Civil War and this. Uh, uh, Joss Whedon was not interested this time. Uh, so now full warning. This is – it says spoiler cast in the title and it's not kidding. We're going to pick apart the big stuff that happens in this movie. And yeah, make no mistake, some big, heavy ramification stuff goes down and we are going to discuss pretty much all of it. So mm-hmm. consider yourself warned. Uh, and I will say right now, let's just, let's get our general thoughts out of the way first. Tyler, um, what, how did you feel about in terms of your opinion about the quality, impact, or just general aspects of Infinity War? I really enjoyed this movie. Um, it's uh, especially when you get to the end; it's very different and difficult, uh, but it still has the the humor and the heart and. The, they do a good job of making every character in this movie somebody that you feel for and somebody that you care about. And they I all got a moment important. pretty much. Yeah. And so, uh, but it is it is kind of weird in the fact that this isn't like, uh, for instance, Winter Soldier. I, I The reason why I have Winter Soldier so high up is that it's a great movie that anybody could watch and enjoy. Um, Not this and you one. Don't really, you need to know anything. This movie, you, you need to have seen pretty much every Marvel movie. And if you haven't, you're going to get lost or you're going to have one of the previous ones spoiled for you because I think like every one of them is, is, is either referenced or mentioned or talked about. Like they're yeah. all um If it's not the center of an important. action scene, it's brought up in dialogue typically. Right. Like, like there's whole movies that get, that get spoiled in the middle of the conversations with people. Like they just, yeah, they'll just they completely spoil what happened in, in a movie. The conversation between Takala and Okoye spoils the end of Black Panther. Exactly. Yeah. So if you haven't seen these movies, the first don't scene go see this one because you're going to. The first scene spoils Thor Ragnarok. Right. Yeah. And they, they bring up, you know, everything that happened in that movie and Guardians 2 and, and all of these movies, they just kind of say it so if you haven't seen them and you don't and you want to go back and watch this movie and not know what's going to happen uh then definitely see them first before you funny. go see i have it. seen those who have been more critical of the movie or down on it in terms of reviews say like this feels way almost too niche because like i i think there are gonna be a lot of people who saw black panther and want to see this and i'll say right now if black panther was your first marvel movie don't don't see this in the theaters at least not if, unless you set aside a weekend and marathon everything before it um, and it should yes, be mentioned, and it awesome. just should be brought up right now. T'Challa and Wakanda are not that big compared to a lot of the heroes priority they, wise. They come in very late. Yes. In the movie. And they'll get a lot of, they don't have any real subplot going on themselves. Uh, no. and to be fair, I'm sure that when Marvel filmed this, they had no idea that Black Panther would become the highest solo movie, uh, in terms of box office gross. I'm sure they knew it would do well, but I don't, I don't know if anybody anticipated that it would beat everything. Yeah, I think on our podcast, I think we 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 had a feeling it was going to be insanely busy, but I, I it is doubt. it is yeah. up to this point the highest grossing superhero movie. Super, or yeah, yeah. Period. And like the Marvel of all the Marvel movies that have come out, including yeah. the original Avengers. Uh, yeah, this there there's already made more money than the first Avengers in its entirety. Yeah, like it's and insane. I'm seeing people <laughs> debating. Do you think this will make more? And I'm actually like considering how many newcomers could watch Black Panther and the word of mouth. Uh, maybe not, but it's still going to be up there. But I think get- it's gonna it's gonna come down to I think how much people want to watch this movie again. 
I think that's going to be the big. And tell I think of there could be not. some very different opinions there, and we will get to that. So, but so my general yeah. thoughts. Um, if anybody follows me on Twitter at Behonkus B E H O N K I S S, uh, I was mad hype for this movie, and if you knew me well, that, that wouldn't surprise you. Even before I started to express hype, because I love this universe so dearly. If I if you consider it one big series like I do, then it is honestly my favorite movie series. Not all mm. the movies are great. There aren't even there only been a handful I'd say are full I consider masterpieces, but they've been. Man, they just have an amazing batting average. You look at most single movie franchises that they can barely last three or four movies before fucking up. And but they've just been able to introduce so many new concepts, put cool dip, different like attack, attack uh, take on different genres from series to series or even entry to entry. Like every Captain America movie feels very different from the other. Uh, and the fact that you know they've started dropping the seeds of where this of this leading up to this with Avengers one and Thanos mm-hmm. and Loki stuff and just kept building on it with Guardians with you know emphasizing the other stones realizing what was there was something bigger than everything before coming I, I couldn't help but get but get mad hyped and I was doing tons of tweets I was doing tons of and I'll just quick self promotion I drew a little funny comic uh, on like my Tumblr and Instagram where. I, I, I was hoping they would make a joke because we have Peter Quill and Peter Parker in the same scene and Tony or someone would go, hey, Peter. And they both go, yes. Uh, we didn't get that. But who, but who cares? That was still, there were still some great moments there. Uh, and I even made some uh, fan trailers because I'm – people if you go back and listen to I think episode 20, I'm a huge fan of the Chris Nolan Batman movies and Dark Knight in particular is one of my favorite movies ever. And I – um. And I love the. I remember I re, I really love the trailers for Dark Knight Rises. It's like the movie too, but the trailers were so good at just stopping stuff. So I went and did fan edits once all the trailers were out, like just taking dialogue and scenes, just and like setting up to like the music because I love that like that chant, the beauty escalation. And I did start to. I was actually stretching myself out. Like, what if I'm really hoping for, hoping for happy myself in this thing? I walk out underwhelmed, or like, and then the early reviews started to hit a couple. And thankfully, I was careful to avoid spoilers because Marvel's been pushing for a long time. Look, go in blind. They were putting out like promo materials. Thanos, like hashtag Thanos demands your silence. Like, for the sake of your friends and stuff, don't tell them anything that happens in this. Let them experience this fresh. And but I was seeing reviews saying like. They're not fucking around by the by the end of the day. Like and all the hype about we're gonna kill some people, there's gonna be big ramifications with the whole universe. And I was trying to just like everybody's predicting, okay, who's gonna die? What's gonna happen? And I'll just say I, I we 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 agreed we're gonna save ending speculation for the end of this episode, but uh they did a great job of kind of subverting my guesses, and I'm thinking a lot of others as well, and we'll get to the specifics of that. But as for the movie as a whole, I yeah, I thought it was pretty pretty fantastic uh not as because why one thing i think the biggest reason i love winter soldier and the nolan batman movies is how crazy intensely it's the point where it's like it's scary it's so intense and you're just like what the hell is going to happen you're on the edge of your seat and i was hoping they would get bring that back here because i didn't get it in civil war and not really so much except for some points and in a different way where it's more just kind of emotional investment and heartbreak rather than fear so mm-hmm. let's let's get into it um Tyler, is there any aspect besides the end that you want to talk first? Um, I put you on the spot. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's fine. I'm trying to think if there's something you, oh, I really want, me want to, to go mention. To look off my notes. Yeah, to, yeah, we'll go, we'll go over that because I don't know if there's anything that I'm like, like right off the bat want to want to bring up first. So let's just. Well, I'll take the last your notes two minutes and, probably. <laughs> right, that that's something that we got to talk so, about. But yeah, now I remember one of the biggest fears people were having about this from the beginning of it being announced and confirming that you know every lead was in was like, can you keep it from feeling too cluttered? Can you make all these groups and things feel cohesive? Because that was actually my my biggest problem with uh, Age of Ultron. Even though I liked it, uh, and it didn't only added a few new characters, it did feel a little overstuffed and all the concepts and plot points and introductions they were throwing at us uh so props the rooster brothers i think in my opinion they they avoided this uh in general uh you know you notice that for most of the movie they splinter off the group there isn't really any part where everybody's all in this one part uh i think they knew that we could be bedlam to kind of keep track of but yeah. and they did a lot of matching up characters that made sense for the most part too. well i i do feel like that's going to be the end game for this. I think that the next movie. That's a line. One of Doctor Strange's together. last line. I think that's this is the end game. Yeah. I think that's going to be where where we end up going. With everyone? Is that, yeah. I think I, I, I think this first part, everyone's split up. But it, I think, well, uh, people are comparing this to Empire Strike Back. And uh, Empire Strike Back. Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> uh, splits all of the heroes up. 
and then in the next movie they all end up together and i think that's going to be where they go with this one i, I think gotta gonna... say this ending makes empire strikes back's ending look downright happy <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, it's almost cheerful oh it's like yeah you might as well start singing a jaunty tune with mary poppins or something mary poppins y'all um, when, <laughs> okay, I gotta say, when that first full trailer for the Mary Poppins sequel hits, I want to edit and dub over all of Emily Blunt's y- lines with Yondo. <laughs> I um, love it. But anyway, uh, and yeah, and I will, I will say that like you, you do. I'm sure they, they and the writers thought long and hard, like who is matched up with who and for what. And generally, I feel like most of these groups were were pretty well done. Uh, I do have a favorite and least favorite. I loved. I'll just call it Team Tony, which is. Him, mm-hmm. Spider Man, uh, Doctor Strange, and eventually most of the Guardians, uh, save uh, save Gamora, Groot, and Rocket, mm-hmm. and because those are that's some of my favorite characters as a whole. Tony, uh, I remember I actually did find uh, Strange to be one of the more underwhelming protagonists in this movie, but he he shines here because this is the first time we have another hero like very very modestly not taking any of Tony's shit. It's not like Steve where he's getting angry. He's just more like, I don't serve you. Don't mouth off to me and listen to what mm-hmm. I have to say. I love that. And the fact that this is – I do wish that Peter had gotten one more movie before this big team up because uh, he'd be feeling more like a veteran. But to be fair, this is where Tony's officially like, you're you're one of us now. And I just love how both because of the inner of his head and the responsibility, Peter is both terrified but really excited throughout it. And I just love the Guardians in general. <laughs> uh, my least favorite, probably, and it doesn't say, not because of the char- of, I don't like the characters, but I do feel like I'll say Team Cap, which is him, Falcon, Bucky, War Machine, uh, Black Widow, uh, Scarlet Witch, and Vision. Uh, they, we, they get a lot of screen time, but I feel like most of their dialogue and plot self was more about serving the big plot than them as characters. Yeah, they weren't having as much fun as the other no, guys. No, and I've seen. And then, I knew one of this. The big complaints going in. We there is not as much screen time or dialogue for Cap as people probably expected. Yeah, there is not. Uh, considering how how you know big part of this is, and yet the closest thing. My my audience was generally pretty quiet throughout the movie. Um, mm-hmm. But the closest we got to like an applause break was when Cap appears. And yeah. it, it was more of like a like a like murmurs and like oh and that stuff like that. Awesome it wasn't really anything. If I hadn't big. seen the trailers, <laughs> yeah, but it was cool to all. It still looks cool. That that oh. first shot of him when when the train's going by and you see his yeah. shadow and you go oh shit it's Captain America. It's really cool. It's also cool to have the other two join him at the same time because you got to get the feeling they were keeping tabs on uh, Wanda and Vision. Yeah, and the fact that they kicked these these two. Black order. Yeah, they kicked their asses and they're just. Three dudes, like yeah. <laughs> Captain America is super strong, and and he's uh he's got of the three of them, he's the one with the most superpowers. Yeah, and he uh, but the three of them, yeah, the three of them, and also a tactician. Yeah, the three of them are actually like a threat to these Dark Order people who are yeah, gigantic including and it's at the impressive. End. Yeah, I was unsure. Can like, can you make? Uh, Falcon and, and I almost said ScarJo and Black Widow see, still seem like they have a purpose and yes they do mm-hmm. uh, they've spent their whole life in battle and knowing what to do so it doesn't matter if they have super so, I mean it's the same way First Avengers proved Hawkeye had a, had a place because who else can do that stuff that he does yeah um, so, but okay, so we bring up the villains. Let's get into them. We'll, we'll get to the big one. But so this Black Order, I was both right and wrong about how I'd feel about them because I was like, okay, everybody's like, we know these villains can be really hit or miss. And considering they're not the main one, I'm sure these guys are going to be pretty throwaway. And uh, three of them were. But I will say, one, I legit loved all of their designs. It just uh, felt yeah. like they had so much thought put into them more than i more than even the trailers were letting off like they all look distinct they all look like they could be the main villain of their own video game or something um and okay so yes three of these are just basically warriors ebony maw was awesome yes for the record ebony... that is the that's the one who gets the most dialogue that skinny british one with the telekinesis who kidnapped strange he's awesome it, yeah. not only is he like a like a very interesting looking character much more dignified his, than the others yes but his prowess in battle was amazing watching yeah. that first sight that fight in in new york uh new york was really cool watching oh, yeah. and him, i just like, love the fact that and... when we see him because you realize he's basically thanos's messenger every time they go to a place to slaughter half the population he's it almost sounds like some crazy religious uh prophet thing like be happy you're in the service of thanos and the greater good and you know these guys unlike a more nebula they do seem to legit be behind this cause um 
And so let's and finally let's talk about Thanos. Uh, what a unique villain he turned out to be. Yeah, uh, I was. I, I had knew going in that they gave quite a bit of backstory to Thanos in this movie and motivation. Uh, yeah, because do you know I, there was so much um, speculation who was first shown in Avengers one. Do you know what his motivation is in the comics? Yes, uh, he's trying to fuck death. <laughs> yes. So for people who have no idea what Tyler's talking about in the original comics, because they they could often get even more outlandish in the movies. Uh, Death, the Grim Reaper, was a sentient being who showed up as like a beautiful woman. Thanos fell over head over heels for her and wanted her to be drawn with him. And she said, impress me, kill half the universe. And so that was his reason behind gathering the stones and committing genocide. And, people, and I've been speculating, like, are they going to do that without making it silly? And it's like, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to do something a bit more grounded and tragic. Um, because I did notice no flashbacks of regarding Thanos' backstory himself. Uh, I have read they're going to do an in-universe novel. Um, it might already be out I know about his life. But you do get enough to understand what's going on, that it's like, I am not doing this just to kill people and just to be evil. I'm worried about the universe after what happened to my planet. It's basically like this is how he sees preventing overpopulation and cons- overconsumption and, and that kind of collapse, which is – it's interesting because that is a noble cause, but his idea of how to fix it is monstrous. Yes, he is uh, a character who is doing this because he thinks it's the best thing to do, and it's it means killing long people. Term, yeah, he's talking about – he brings up his, his – uh, no, he brings up Gamora's planet because we get the flashback of him taking her as a kid and killing half of it. And she's like – he says something like, have you seen what it's like now? It's paradise. Um, mm-hmm. He's like, I, I, I don't even know if he uh, takes that much pleasure in killing people, but he's like – I am doing this to save the future. If I don't do this, no one will exist ever so long. And maybe he would be right in terms of the operation long term. But I mean, obviously, there's got to be a better way to fix it than just that. Um, but and we'll also get to it. Uh, this is a guy who has not lost the capacity to love and feel regret and sorrow. Uh, mm-hmm. And the movie drives that home in a really clever and impactful way. Exactly. Yeah. I I was really impressed by that. And that and whole that, section. Yeah. yeah. Actually I, I guess we can talk about that now. Let's build up to a little yeah. bit though. The the Guardians ended up very closely entwined in this whole plot, even though like a lot of them weren't directly connected to Thanos, but obviously Gamora and Nebula were and Drax was motivated by it. The others weren't, but they still had stuff to do. Uh Rock and Groot were given motivation by being Thor's emissaries and helping out with that part. And Quill ended up important because of we learn a lot more about Gamora in this and the fact that he, they clearly have gotten so much closer over these movies. And I was trying to figure out – I guess we can get to this this, this big – probably the biggest spoiler of the midpoint of the movie. Um, I was trying to figure out – because you notice they've kept it a whole secret this whole time, the last – the Soul Stone. Yeah. The only one that has never been shown or hinted at in the movies and – long fan theories like i was so convinced it was going to be revealed on black panther like it was part of wakanda's infrastructure nope and right it's that seemed like uh even with the the adamantium coming there maybe that's where it came from yeah but then uh, i think they knew that would be too vibranium obvious. not not adamantium vibranium the vibranium uh, give, coming give it time, give it time. <laughs> yeah um i'll just say right now that i just quick aside i I'm sure Avengers and uh, X Men and Deadpool will be integrated in some way, but I d- I would not want to see them reset either universe to make them fit. But maybe they can finally Im- like indulge in the multiverse idea. X Men and Deadpool can be a separate universe that intersects occasionally. I I mean this is growing down the line of like what what we think might happen like way in the future. But I I, I think with with Deadpool I think you got to keep that the way it is and, and the way it's running and I think that you just do the thing you're doing with Venom and you know I don't you, want Deadpool you, to show up in an Avengers 5 or anything I'm just saying Yeah that's what I'm saying like you you do what they, what they do with Venom and you just have that those movies oh, yeah, run and yeah. and we'll see how what Venom Yeah like. it's going to have your creative input and just to kind of let it keep running on its own and you don't have yes. to wrap but, it in But um getting back to the, the, the multi- so we were talking about the, the Guardians. So yeah, the Soul Stone. That's how we start by. We talk about a team. So no, the Soul Stone is on a planet that has never been mentioned. And so there's – Demore's dropping hints to everybody. Like she's not – she can't tell Peter the full deal. But she's like, if Thanos takes me, you have to kill me. And I was like – starting to go like, is it in her? Because they're, they're – <laughs> you know, they're, they're building up. There's 
I will say also, I had seen a lot of reviews saying, like, this movie takes no time to breathe. There's no room for growth or emotion. I'm like, uh, up to the last act, I disagree. There's a lot, like, because Thanos forcefully takes Gamora, and there's, like, a lot of, you know, reminiscing between them and arguments. And holy shit, like, I was wondering, I thought Nebula's introduction was going to be her trying to kick some ass. Turns out she already did and failed. And uh, that torture stuff, shit. Like, that, yeah. the fact that she's, like, completely disassembled and just screaming to that's that's thanos's emotional manipulation to get Gamora to talk and no it's not because it's in her but it's because she does know where it is yeah. she saw it found a map that burned it so she's the only one who knows and she's like all right all right it's here so they go there and before we even get to the sad part my biggest reaction they go in that cave that cloaked figure shows up oh yeah he's like oh this is some nobody guy whatever it gets over he takes it off and i went oh really loud yeah red he's, skull he's lives. Back. red Holy skull shit. still around and Holy he is shit. very different and he's not even you go weaving yeah but i was is. wondering that it did sound enough like him but i was like because we talked we talked about the marvel episode it was like it would be nice to put a little cap on did he die like what happened but we were like yeah who we would say he's not interested so we're never going to do it and it's like well, there's with this, this there's only one like character that's been set up in this that hasn't come back and that's what's his name from incredible hulk uh oh, leader uh not abomination right no the Is other the guy, guy who gets that like I, who starts mutating at the end with like the yeah his, yeah i've always wondered about that guy maybe yeah. some other day i think um, we've hulk, all we've now we've now closed pretty much closed every door in the mcu for the most part just maybe even just a one line mention of what happened to that guy because i just don't you know incredible hulk wasn't that well received so i don't know if they're just yeah, just something in someday Marvel. Come on, if, we, if, we if just, you're willing to to wrap up Red Skull and give us some closure there. Zach, Zach and I just did this conversation where we uh, went th- like kind of just went over all of the movies leading up to Infinity War. Yeah, and we basically kind of decided that he probably just died. <laughs> like That's, he I, was I, probably I, I just was like, dying. Yeah, yeah. I was like, they're never going to bring him up again, so we just have to assume he got disintegrated. Nope, he has yeah. been cursed. Mm-hmm. Pretty much for fucking with these stones, he ends up, I assume, immortal because it's been like seventy years, and kind of the guardian of this this altar and knowing what the deal is. Um, and that's like you were saying, yeah, it was not Hugo Weaving. They actually apparently it's an actor from Walking Dead, but you know, it, with all the makeup, it's hard to tell. And I think he did a good enough uh, approximation of the voice. But I did like, the, yeah, he was because Reskol was so smarmy and egotistical in that first movie, and you get a sense he has been much more humbled and tragic now it's a cool yeah. angle to tank and just a nice little easter egg but so yeah let's get to the real emotional wallet because that whole part with the um the collector like you know laying ways to nowhere that's when i was like he grabbed mora and that's when i was like oh here it comes it's in her he's gonna cut her open the end no he just takes her um so we get here and i kind of piece it together pretty quick when he was saying like give a soul for a soul or like something you must care about then but of course gamora is not clear she points out like it has to be someone you care about. You've lost the capacity of love. And then we both get our one of our biggest gut punches and the most clever way to, to grow Thanos as a character because he realized he 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 lets it out like, no, Gamora, I have genuinely loved and admired you. I'm sad you turned your back on me, and I'm so fucking torn up that I have to do what I have to do now, but he does it. R.I.P. Gamora. And mm-hmm. That was rough. Yeah. And especially because it was especially rough because you, you, it's one of those, there's a, there's a few times in this movie where you see something coming from a mile away and you know that it's like, it's going to happen. And when it and got this is, soul, soul, yeah, I knew, but I, I could not have yeah. interested. But no, what hurt me more was like, this, this Rex Thanos, mm-hmm. he, he is not this soulless monster. He is, he's tearing up. He's like, I so don't want to do this, but I know to achieve my life goal, I have to. I have to get rid of possibly the only person left that I love. And that's that that's just so unique for a blockbuster like this to do with its villain. Uh-huh. Sometimes maybe they do it if it's like their longtime henchman who's already evil. No, this is someone we have grown to love over two movies, and she never expected it. She only realized in her last moments that he truly did love her, even if he was terrible at expressing it. Yeah, and it's terrifying. It's bad love because she's because oh, he's still not a only this, person, but not only does she not want him to love her, but also he's about to kill her, yeah, and she that. tries, and she doesn't even mind dying. It's not even that she tries to kill herself and, and can't because she's trying to take one. For oh yeah, before that, the universe. She's like, 
if I die, fine, but I can't do it for... I love the fact that he keeps doing the bubbles for every time he disintegrates. Yeah. Weapon. And I will say, like, after that, I'm not sure if Red Skull is still alive, because Thanos just kind of warps away. I'm going to assume he is. But actually, I, that does remind me... I want to talk about the other... The first scene and its casualties and ramifications. So, y- yeah, the former supporting cast of Thor is 100% dead and buried. No more Heimdall, no more Loki. Yes. Uh, Heim- Heimdall and Loki are... Um, for sure yeah. dead. And, and this this opening moment is such uh, a harrowing experience for the Hulk that he refuses to participate in the rest of the movie. Oh, is that why he did it? You're right. Yeah. Oh, my God. I was trying to figure out why was Hulk... I just thought he was grumpy. It's like... Okay, no, yeah, let's, let's the Hulk dissect. didn't want to come back. I do want to dissect this scene because it was so fantastic. Um, yeah. One, okay, one big lingering question. Okay, so these are dead. A lot of these Asgardians are dead. No sign or mention of Valkyrie, Korg, and Meek. Yeah. So I am going to assume for now they got into a skate pod or something. And maybe yeah, a couple I'm of gonna assume gardens. I'm going to assume that they're alive. Just like Lady Sif is somewhere alive. Because she I, wasn't, she she didn't get murdered in Thor Ragnarok. Well, you know the reason for that, right? Uh, why? I, I, I have actress, theories, but I don't remember the actual Her actress, Jamie Alexander, landed the lead in the TV show. And they just ultimately couldn't make a schedule where she could fit in some time to film. Yeah, it's but I also feel. Could have but actually, didn't she guest star on Agents of Shield? Yeah, she multiple times. I'll bet she was, on, she was on it several times. I'll bet they'll touch on her again in that. They, she could probably set her set up a cameo for her there. Yeah, I feel like that is a character that that might be the the reason why. But it also helps that you know I think she of those characters. Um, if they can give closure to Red Skull, they should give closure to Chef too. Yeah, and and I think people people like her more than they liked everybody else. So I, I, I was still legit sad dramatic. when the Warriors three got killed because I did not expect mm-hmm. that. I was like Odin, yeah. sure, but those three, oh, man. And that's and that's one of those moments, and, and it's something that you don't really realize until they they put it together. But there's the scene where um, Rocket and Thor are talking about you know. The, it, everything that's happened to Thor. Oh, that was and one of my favorite goes, character moments. Yeah, he goes, uh, he goes, well, your brother's dead. That sucks. And you killed your sister and your, your dad mother? died. Oh, and he goes, Best yeah, friend, stick to the stabbed heart. in the heart. Yeah. There, uh, and you just kind of come to the realize the re- realization that like everybody that Thor do is pretty much dead at this Thor, point. That was because I didn't like how little they grieved for Odin, his friends in Ragnarok. Um, mm-hmm. But and I was worried they would do that here. But it's like that scene hits you. Like he's tearing up. You can tell he's trying to stay strong on the outside, but he is so. And I think at the point one point where they're saying because later in that scene, the, you know, the Peter Dinklage cameo is like this might kill you, but he's like I don't have anything left to lose. Yeah, it's Thor's gone through some shit. And in that moment, Chris Hemsworth I, is so good. He's hilarious, but he's very good at, yeah, at, is at being serious, too. Thor Ragnarok was so funny, and now this starts with some heavy lo- – and, like, what, and wait, it, wait for Loki to go, too, because – okay, I'll be yeah. honest. I had long guessed the opening would see Heimdall and Loki dying. I was like, so did I. I knew from the moment it started that they were gone. Well, I was looking at the trailers, and I was like, there was no shot of Loki past that intro scene, I assume. Uh, they're not talking much about what he's doing past there. Heimdall's a smaller character, so there would be less ramifications for his death. But I love the fact that the, Loki's last moments was still him flip-flopping because he's okay with killing Thor at first, but then he gets second thoughts because see how agonizing he is. And his last moment is a fake-out. Like, I don't think he even thinks he could kill Thanos, but he's like, I'm going to go out as an Asgardian. And the fact I, that I, it's not a quick disintegration or stab or anything, he is slowly and painfully choked to death. And I, and I also think, too, that he... You, you could read into it as much as you want. It almost seems like whether or not he just straight up was like, I uh, I feel so bad for Thor that I'm going to spare him. Or ultimately, he kills Thor, but I still have the fucking Tesseract and he's going to get it well, from me anyway. Also, so it doesn't really matter what I do here. Don't forget at first, he throws everybody off guard. We have a Hulk. Maybe he was trying, trying to buy Maybe trying to buy time. I honestly think that Loki is trying. I I think that especially after his arc in Thor Ragnarok. Yeah, I, I want to believe that he was so good wants... the end of Ragnarok was his reformation pretty much with the whole I'm really mm-hmm. here. And and I think that th- there's one thing that I know for, sh- for sure. When you look at how well the Marvel Universe is set up and how well they – uh, balance these stories and these characters. You know that if something is in here, it, that it's going to get paid off, and not always like in a oh that was a great payoff. But sometimes it's just there are things that you need to see that you can't just 
have. And Loki needs that moment in Ragnarok where he feels like he's on Thor's side finally for real that makes this moment so much more powerful. And you know that, like, with, with the Hulk not coming back at any point in this movie, that's going to get paid off at the next yeah. movie. And you know I, that with with uh, with Steve and Tony still fighting each other and still not on speaking terms. They never meet each other not, in this movie. Exactly. That's That hasn't been resolved. So there's a certain point where you realize they're not going to die. Die. Because we'll I, I, I think I, I got to the point where I realized Tony wasn't going to die in this movie because – there was too much left open between him and Pepper and uh, yeah. Well, Steve, and Pepper's for, still for around. That to we'll get to that. So we'll go forward a little bit. I'm trying. I'm just going through my notes. Give me. Do you still have a time? You think you need to wrap up? Uh, I mean, I'm fine right okay. now. I'll let, uh, I'll let you know if we get close enough. Sure, to sure, 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 sure. Uh, oh, I do. Okay, yes. One last thing about the opening scene. What a great way to show Thanos how fierce Thanos is for him to just beat down Hulk with barely any weapons. He has one stone he barely uses. I just love the fact he lets Hulk take a few punches. And you see Ebony Mahler saying, let him have his fun. And then he just goes to town. Hulk is knocked out and bleeding. And it's just like, you look at Hulk in those first two Avengers movies, and you're just like, fuck. Yeah. And and like I said, Hulk is so afraid of Thanos after this that yes. he refuses to come back for the rest of the movie. And even, he, even Banner in this, I love the fact that most of the movie, like, Banner is shell-shocked. He is fucking shaken after what just happened he's coming off like a paranoid mm. madman almost but you know what he's seeing that he's right and so props to the writers and to um to mark ruffalo oh yeah mark ruffalo that's the thing and it, we can talk about it like over and over again everybody in these movies are so good they're yeah. all great actors and yeah. that's why um sarah finn haley deserves all the credit in the world for casting because everybody is perfect in this movie in this movie in particular there is so much happening with all these different characters where so many things you know, to juggle yeah and and all of these characters have emotional things that they have to do i would say you know in this movie dude, there's so many but i but I, I just off the top of my head elizabeth olsen tom holland uh zoe saldana chris pratt uh chris hemsworth like we list all, all the of stars these people will be here for yeah totally, yeah exactly they all have big emotional moments that they 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 deal with yeah. in this movie basically and every they're all bar great. bar ant-man and hawkeye you just know they're saving them for four because you get one quick line they're under house arrest right now yeah they are uh, i i wouldn't be surprised if they have to be in four well yeah i think that they'll they'll be in four but i also i feel like i wouldn't be surprised if hawkeye is in wasp in some capacity and that's in, why because what that's what is in ant-man and the wasp and oh maybe yeah. yeah yeah yeah. because that would explain one i mean those two have some history together and two that's what they did, basically did with thor yeah. and hulk they and also weren't in any you, movie in you, civil war and just because they were in right. another movie together and i don't know if you read it was finally confirmed the time frame for ant-man and the wasp it's just after uh civil war so it's before this but in between uh because you know if it was during this we would be aware Right, yeah, it definitely was. Was uh, I'm guessing the ending of it might play into some of that, or at least set up where we can expect to see those characters by the time four happens. Um, yeah, we'll so let me just go through. Oh, I I kind of wish I didn't know Peter Dinklage was in this movie because what a clever <laughs> way of what his character is. It would have it would have been really neat if I hadn't known that he was in it because yeah. when I saw him, I'd be like, "Holy shit, it's Peter, Peter Dinklage!" <laughs> yeah, but it was great because it's like he's a dwarf, but he's like a giant because they didn't change any of Peter Dinklage's proportions. They just blew up all of him. Yeah. It's just a big green screen Peter Dinklage wandering around. And I think they might've lowered his voice a little bit, but he was fun. Uh, and also a good way to show how decimated a society can be by Thanos. Yeah. Um, let me just go. I'm going through here a little bit. So many of these are about the end. We can get to that real soon. Red Skull reviews. Oh, quick. Just a little quick thing. I hope I wasn't the only one confused at the beginning about, okay, wait, what stone does Thanos have here and how did he get it? And it's, you could, you might, it might be easy to miss. They mention it was the, uh, it was the, the old one. On, yeah, he it's the and, one from Guardians of the Galaxy. He, he went, went to decimated Xandar. That Xandar, the planet they protected at the end, uh, you know, took half the population and grabbed that stone. So, okay, let's, I, just, I, I do want that, to. That's out. actually, I, I'll just say that really quick. That's probably the thing that I was disappointed about this movie the most is that that's not seen. That I they would just love to mention that, it. yeah. Um, take out all John C. Riley, maybe. We're going close. 
Yeah, I, I always assumed that when when I knew this movie, you, like when you know this movie is coming, and that's when that orb yeah, is. Oh, that they're going to end saw up the in end this. of Guardians one where they put in that vault. I'm like, oh, you know, in the opening scene, he's going to be breaking through that. No, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That. but like I we said, just they, had to to make, see it. they had you knew with all everything that was already here, they had to cut some corners. So that Ant Man, Hawkeye, and you know, some I, I I still don't feel like Cap has much of a, Cap or Bucky have a real subplot here, like you would expect them to, or to, or to uh, any of the Wakandans really. Um, yeah. But I, I, I feel like, you know, that's what Avengers 4 is for, for the most part. Um, okay, so we can get to the, the, the whole last act. And make, but I will say, I guess it sort of ties to the last act. We didn't get as much Thanos as I thought we would, but then he's such a mayor player in the last act. And he's had enough build up. And like I said, the stuff with Gamora has such good ramifications. But I will say, because I had been going through in my head for years, like, all right, I think I know, I know what most of these does. He's going to have all of them. They're the powers of God. So I was like... He can control Triumph. He can just disintegrate anybody near him. Like, how the fuck are they even going to get near him? And I'm like, I feel like the only way they're going to beat him is in some form of outsmarting. Uh, and, well, let's get into it. It turns out it was never about beating him. Mm-hmm. So the whole the whole last thing in Wakanda is is, at, is really good. I was actually way more into the, the smaller duel everybody was having with Thanos. Especially when, because I remember being like, okay, they, I was, I wasn't seeing Mantis like, oh, she needs to get on and put him to sleep, and she does, but he's resisting like hell, and then Quill has to go and fuck everything up with his emotions because they learn that's how they learn Gamora is dead, and he fucks up and he lays voice, and but this is where we start getting subvert things subvert. I was looking at those trailers, like looking at like Tony with the the armor half disintegrated and just looking so beaten and worn down. And I'm like, this is where the, he's gonna, this is where gonna, so. Let's start getting more into it. Uh, so much speculation because this is it, they were saying from early on, like they were making it clear all these Marvel press guys, like th- there's going to be a body count. You're going, we're going to be killing off some of these characters, both supporting and some leads. Uh, and so everybody just for so long was like, oh, it's got to be Tony, it's got to be Cap, it's probably the old guys who's passing the torch, or and when uh, well, they're going to call Thanos, uh, you're wrong. Mm-hmm. You are. S- we, I think most of us have ended up being more wrong than we ever could have imagined because I was seeing, like I said, reviews were being careful not to spoil this ending. But I think it's like people were – some people were sobbing at the end. Some people were like this is – one guy was saying like this might be the most audacious thing you, I've ever seen in a mainstream superhero movie. And so I was trying to think and my main thing – I guess I wasn't that far off. I was like he's going to do it. He's going to – take half the life. But here's what I wasn't putting into account even when it was brought up because Stannis was saying – when I do this, I'm not going to discriminate with it. It's not going to be take out the rich, take out the poor. It's going to be like a lottery, just randomly chosen. So, mm-hmm. he, you know, you think there's that emotional thing where, like, Wanda has to take out Vision's uh, stone and kill him, which she does, and that's already sad. But then you remember, because I was noticing, like, Thanos is not just immediately decimating this planet and stuff. But then you realize, like, I don't want to kill any more than half. And I don't want to – that's why he's, like, he's not killing the heroes that come at him because, like, you know, he's like, if I do this, some will be taken care of anyway. So he doesn't, everybody's going mad. He doesn't kill Falcon. He doesn't kill Paul. He doesn't kill Cap. He just throws him to the side, knocks him out. And then after Vision is disintegrated, he's like, that's nice, but tell him time stone. Rewind time. There's Vision. And he just rips it out and Vision balls like a cold husk. And then, you know, Paul comes out. Oh, man, that, that new weapon is so fucking amazing. The Stormbringer. It's like the end of Ragnarok times 10 because it's just like... Hold, I think he might be, could beat the Hulk with this, probably. And he could have beat Thanos, but as he says, next time, aim for the head. Snap. And yeah. I noticed, uh, and some other people want this out, those last, because I was not, other than Gamora, I, I, I was okay with Loki and Heimdall because I'd lost Spectre. Gamora did throw me for a loop, but I was like, I, they're holding him off on this body count they're talking about. Are they saving a lot for four? And it's like, no, we are saving it for like the last two minutes. And it is silent and somber and harrowing and just, I, I, I tweeted about this earlier day. Like, based on what people were saying, I'm like, I'm either going to walk out of this movie a sobbing mess because the only movie to make me cry in the MC before was Guardians 2. Um, suffice to say, I loved the ending and the character that was involved there. Um, right. So I was imagining, like, if we get a crazy death or a select handful of characters, yeah, you're going to fuck me up. Or was it going to be, like, walk out just shaking, just feeling kind of, like, fucked up and scared and messed up? I walked out neither. I just walked out speculating, like, think looking back on this, like, the, ramif- the possible ramifications, what directions will come from this, because in the end, it was not about just taking out these phase one heroes. It was about taking out most of the supporting sidekick 
sidekicks and almost all the new heroes. Right, because we are left with all of the original yes. Avengers. Thor's alive, Hulk's alive, T- Tony's alive, Cap's alive, Bucky, gone, Falcon, <laughs> gone. Uh, every uh, Guardian except Nebula and, and Rocket, gone. Uh, Doctor Strange, gone. The crazy one, Peter Parker, gone. And right. that's the Ugh. part that did get to me, his death, because he's, everybody's just kind of quickly, dis- oh, oh my God, Black Panther. Black Panther. Jala, he, and he just, he, he I, I get the feeling he doesn't even know what's about to happen to him, because he's saying to, oh, Okoye is so broken up, he's like, no more dying, and, but no, the, the Peter was the one that fucked with me, because he was able to, I guess, resist it a little bit, but he was like, I, I, I he, was, he was breaking down, he was like, Tony, I, I don't want to go, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, and Peter's just, and Tony's just hugging him, and. That was fucking devastating it was chilling it was awful that is that is like e- easily the the worst part of that this whole movie and like it's great but it's so sad and it's just really upsetting a, the deaths in this ended up being so left field and because of that the, because if you notice which characters were killed in terms of their timing and you know who's supposed to be getting more movies i'm trying to figure out like there's just so many, and, oh, and the fact that Thanos lives, and but he has accomplished his mission, and that his last couple of scenes, I, I felt bad for him because he gets that. I don't know if it's supposed to be a hallucination or if it's he's like seeing the seeing the dead because he goes to that red realm and sees a little Gamora. Like you did it, he's like yes, and she's like, what did it cost? And he went everything. And then the last shot of the movie, it isn't of the Avengers, it's of Thanos back at I assume his home world just a long shot and you can just see he is going through so many emotions like this has ended up being as bittersweet for him as it as it is the others he lost the only person left he cared about yeah and it's bold it's it is and i love the fact that okay so just like really quick sure i'm gonna go over everybody who died yeah go oh Um, you have a list go for it because i want to speculate about a couple Okay, it um, is Bucky, Drax, Groot, Mantis, uh, Wanda, Peter, uh, Star Lord, Doctor Strange, T'Challa, and um, Sam. Um, and who? Sam Wilson. The uh, the oh, and and Wanda. Yeah, I said Wanda. Oh, I missed that. So yeah, so yeah, so it's that. That's everybody who dies, and then and Loki, Heimdall, and Gamora killed earlier by Thanos and company, and the right. Black Order's dead too. Right. Um. Then left is Nebula, Tony, um, and they're both the they're the only two left on Titan. Uh, Steve, uh, Captain America, Thor, Bruce Banner, um, Natasha Romanoff. Um, War Machine. Rhodes, yeah. Uh, Rocket, Koi, and Boku are left. Uh, I'm going to assume uh, Shuri is too, because we probably would have seen her die. Yes, we don't see her yeah, at the there end, might be but I'm sure know. she's oh, oh, okay. oh, no, 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 Don't forget the post-credits. Oh, right. Yeah, Nick Fury and Maria are dead too. <laughs> yeah, man, one more gut punch. Though I will yeah. say, Mother f- is the best death line for Sam Jackson in a PG-13 movie. Oh, it's great. And I love the way they, so the, we're, well, I guess we'll just bring it up really quick because we're talking about the, uh, the post credits. The post credit scene is Nick Fury and Maria Hill right as all the disintegration is yeah, happening on Earth. Yeah, you're watching a helicopter crash and all these people are crashing guitars and there's, it's actually really cool because you see like this car crash in front of them and then and there's no they driver. go and check on it. There's no driver and then Maria disappears and all these other people yeah. being around. He's Fury running through the screen and then he starts to. And then he he pulls out this pager. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's all weird looking, and he sends something. sends a mess and and disintegrates. And then you see Captain Marvel's logo on yeah. this on this pager. I'm not. And, go ahead. And, and I, I just love the fact that in the order that we we have this, I think it's still kind of weird that we're getting Ant Man and the Wasp, which takes place before this. But next year in March, we're getting this Captain Marvel movie that's set in the '90s. Yeah, and then. This end credit sequence, it's like, if you're watching him in order, it's like, um, he pulls that out, and then we're going to find out what that means, and then we're getting right back into Infinity War Part 2, or whatever it's well, called. I'm going to admit, I was actually a little underwhelmed by this, because I think it was mainly because I've always assumed, yeah, Captain Marvel's going to factor into 4. Her, she's a big new character, her movie's coming out in between, why would they not utilize her? Uh, I was legit, was I was honestly hoping for one of two things, either a tease that the Defenders would be involved in Avengers 4, 
Because that's why, mm-hmm. I mean, I think it's also why they said we're not going to bother with him in this because it's just too crowded, but you've severely lim- like cut down your lineup. Or how cool would it be for that to be the first announcement of another main hero and out, like coming out? Like somebody they had like, not teased at all. Um, I guess it would have been nice, but I I think I spent the whole movie knowing that this is where I, I was expecting her to be in the movie. So I was like waiting the entire movie for her I, to be I had no clue whether she would show around. up in the flesh, but I was like, there might be teased to her. But I was like, no, really, the big thing for me at the post credits is that it confirms that Nick and Maria are gone, which sucks. Because, yes, they were their influence was limited after uh, uh, Winter Soldier, but still, they've been there from day one. Though at least we'll get one more with them, uh, or at least Nick in uh in that because that, that's also they're going to be using that to bring back dead characters colton's going to be in it and ronin and his side guy are going to be in it too right because this all takes place 90s in the 90s yeah, yeah. so this is Clever. this is a setup but i love that you're going to find out the kind of like origin of that pager and yeah. basically probably like hey if you need me or something's going on or or right. whatever okay. it is so it's, it's going to be interesting let's get into what i was talking about like i feel this might be this might fuel this whole ending might fuel more fan speculation and theories than any other movie I can think of in terms mm-hmm. of now I understand people are saying like, what is Avengers four going to be about? And what is the universe and list of survivors and dead going to be like when that's done? Cause now I'm like, you still have one more movie to kill off some of these phase one guys, but it's like, I, I legit don't believe like, okay. I'm, I'm like Loki Heimdall and Gamora. They're gone. Cause they were murdered. But I'm like, so many both side and main guys, including, you know, we were getting a homecoming to, uh, I think they were already saying that you'll see more Dr. Strange and, uh, like I'm like, and there've been seeing, there've been some, some like set photos taken of four where it makes it look like it takes parts of it take place in the past. So I'm like, I'm also assuming like Captain Marvel is going to work from the nineties to now. Cause they're not going to put Brie Larson in older age makeup. So I'm, a, I'm thinking time travel and maybe attempting to correct some of this will be a big part of Avengers four. I I think that um, I, I'm assuming that Captain Marvel isn't going to look any different from the 90s. To but now. I feel like I think uh, that that's just how that's going to. But Brie Larson does not look like she would be like 40 or whatever. They're going to have to. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying I think that or, she or Cryo Freezer won't have Captain Bu- or Cryo yeah. Freezer like Captain Bucky. Yeah, but I'm like, but I also I'm also trying to think. I feel like they're not going to just like resurrect everybody. Because, like, Marvel has been saying for a while, like, they knew people complaining, like, you killed uh, you killed Loki, but you didn't really. You killed Nick Fury, but you didn't really. You killed Coulson, but you didn't really. And they're like, we want to have more. They, that's what they said with, uh, they did with, spoilers, Yondu in Guardians 2. They're like, no, we want some of these to start being permanent. But I'm like, so I'm thinking by the end of Avengers 4 and whatever happens there, we're going to, they're going to cherry pick who gets resurrected. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I, I think... I feel it, like it's not going to be they all stay dead or they all come back. They're going to have to compromise in some way. Yeah, I, I feel like for for sure, I you know, Peter is going to come back. Okay, I do want to talk about – let me talk about the three main newcomers who got killed because um, Peter, I'm actually – I, I doubt it'll happen. It would be amazing if it turns out this was planned all along and Homecoming 2 was about Miles Morales. Because uh, it was confirmed that Donald Glover's character in Homecoming is, is his uncle. Um, That's true, yeah. How amazing it would it have been if they were like, we gave you two, three movies to think this was another Peter thing. It's like, nope, pass the mantle. Um, Black Panther, okay, T'Chaka, I, I don't know. I want to say no. Maybe they'd originally planned to keep him dead, but it, the movie was such a hit. Like, in the comics, I know Shuri and some other characters inherited the mantle, and that would be cool. Uh, if you listen to my Black Panther episode, I legit love Shuri to pieces. But she is great, yeah. But I, but it's too early. Like, yeah, and to start I feel like you have the plan. They might retcon some of that after how popular T'Challa and his movie is. Uh, man, I'm sure there are going to be a bunch of like black kids who are so in love with him walking out of this movie sobbing. Mm-hmm. Uh, just try and stay hopeful, guys. Um, so that's okay, here's the one that I that I, that I have the most speculation about Doctor Strange, and this is because about that part where he used the time stone to glimpse every possible outcome. He's like, there are millions of these, and there's only one where we win. And the part that makes me curious about this, because so, so towards the end, he's about, you know, Thanos is about to kill Tony like we're expecting. But then Strange interrupt and is like, if you promise to spare him, you can have the stone. And that happens. He doesn't say why. And at the end, I'm not going to lie, I didn't realize he got Strange and, Star- and Star-Lord died until I got home and read the list. It just it happened so fast. Um, 
Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sure there'll be some others. Some others there'll be some they miss. Uh, oh, and man, Rocket having to lose Groot all over again. I, I, mm-hmm. I'll just say from the Guardians, I think that is the end of Groot because they probably wanted to do a different version of Groot each movie, and now they might be out of it. Um, uh, more is not coming back. It was, there, there was too much purpose behind that death. Uh, that's what she was thinking. Yeah. Drax and Mantis, I hope one of them comes back. At least Drax, because his kind of humor is irreplaceable. Even in this movie, look, I'm invisible. You, you can't see the motion of me <laughs> doing this. And I'm also convinced he has a gay crush I, on Thor. I, yeah, he, well, that's not even convinced. Like, it, he for sure does. And then I think that, uh, I love. Mantis' character. I think I one of the Mantis biggest laughs pieces. of the movie that I, because I worked after I uh, finished watching the movie, so mm-hmm. I saw this scene twice, and the part when Mantis says, we we take, or kick uh, kick, kick names, names and, and take, take ass. ass. That got and, a big laugh. And a fantastic <laughs> callback where they recognize Footloose when Cole brings it up, and it, oh, because so Mantis good. says, we're, we're the Avengers, the heroes of the Earth, just like the famous Kevin Bacon. Is he an Avenger? He might be. Yeah, and I love, yeah, he goes, I like all or uh yeah thor goes oh like it's like kevin bacon he goes yeah maybe i haven't been there for sure um <laughs> and I love, I love the part when when they bring it up to peter and they're like in footloose and he and he goes yeah it's like uh, is it still the greatest movie ever made no, and peter was. goes it never was <laughs> I, I would have liked him to say he got a remake nobody cared about or something um but uh, yeah, I just and I, I did love like the first movie. I've noticed that each movie gives a point where some of the Avengers fight each other. First was Thor versus Cap and Iron Man. Second was Hulk versus Iron Man. And this was Tony's crew versus the Guardians when they first had no idea who they were. Uh-huh. Uh, very satisfying. And I love uh, the cool thing about uh, Peter's new arm because my favorite thing about it were those those legs that would come out. Um, that helped him, oh, yeah. you know, defeat Ebony Maw and say strange. And then towards the end where he's just trying to play damage control because all the Avengers have been, other Guardians have been knocked out and he's just like, grab the, grab, grab Mantis and Drax and just, he's gone full on Spider-Man at this point. Uh, it would be a shame to throw that away after just this one movie, but I have no idea what, like, I think the child, the child uh, will be back and Peter, I, I'm guessing yes. Event, and Guardians, like, like I said, they're going to have to cherry pick something. I do think Doctor Strange will be back. I feel like his capabilities are still too closely linked to what's probably going to happen in this. And maybe he even knew, like, he was not very upset about him himself dying. Well, this is this is what happened. And I, I think this is the way you read it. Um, at one point in the movie, Strange uses the Time Stone to watch all future outcomes of yeah. the current conflict. Yeah. And That's why I think um, he, he sacrificed, he gave the Time Stone to Thanos. He's like, this is the only way that long term we win. Yeah, I think he. I think he. He says in all in all these like fourteen million versions of this, there's only one where we win. And then when he says it, he tells Tony it was the only way. And I think he's basically saying this is the way that we win. He is the only character who knows the plot of Avengers Four. Yeah, (laughs) and he so he realizes what's going to happen, but he knows that he has to do it in order to. Yeah, I'm guessing make everything probably resurrected because he did not seem upset in the slightest about dying. And there's also a great. uh, uh, I think. You could probably read it as a um, well, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, for dramatic, I, no, dramatic irony. Uh, in that Thanos says, "Do you, you have the the most powerful thing and you didn't use it?" Talking about the time stone to Doctor Strange, he says, "You didn't use the one thing that that that's powerful enough to." Or, I forget what the, the wording is, but he basically he taunts Doctor Strange and says, "You didn't even use the time stone." But it's like you—he he did use the time oh, stone, yeah. and I think that's motherfucker. it's just not the way you think to use it. And I think that's actually the the way also, that they end up Also, it was a nice it. touch that after giving Wong a lot in the opening, he makes it clear that for the rest of the movie, like I still, our other sanctums are messed up. I still have to keep it up because, like, they make it clear, like, if those, you know, if that field goes down, not just Dormammu, but like they say, there's an infinite number of, of realities. There are probably a lot more time out of time gods that could. It's nice to know those that order still has that priority straight, even in all this chaos. Mm-hmm. Hope unless Wong is dead, but I, 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 I want to say him, Pepper, and Shuri will still be alive, but we'll see. My guess is I'm sure Shuri is still alive, and you know um, what I saw somebody. And I actually up. love this is a great opportunity for all those side characters from Black Panther to, to get to do more because yeah, I didn't be... I, I didn't expect Mbaku to to show up. I was afraid Mbaku was going to die, but he didn't. Yeah, and I was really happy about that because he didn't get to do enough in this movie. Well, we He's didn't see we didn't so see good in the first one. We didn't see uh, Nakia or his mom. Mm-hmm, that's true. Um, 
but we will see what happens. And I'm sure Chris will be happy about that because apparently when they when he saw it with his wife, she said Mbaku reminded him, uh, reminded her of him. <laughs> um, but yeah, so just the main thing. So here's the thing. So yeah, Thanos is not dead. And I believe he still has the gauntlet because he warped himself back home at the end. And I think he's still holding it. But is, I'm like, yeah. and you notice how like they're always like at the end of each movie, Black Panther will return, Spider-Man will return. This is just... Thanos will return. And I'm like, <laughs> which I I out loud said when that came up because you watch you watch Maria Hill die and uh, watch Nick Fury yeah. die and it says, uh, and then you see the Captain Marvel thing and it says Thanos will return and I went, oh great, <laughs> like it wasn't enough. <laughs> like let's bring him back for more. But I I'm trying to figure, what's his purpose going to be in here? His mission is accomplished. And for all we know, he might want to like his own. I'm going to settle down and be a farmer now. My life's work is done, and everyone I love is dead. But my is, is my he guess, gonna, is he going to start supporting them with whatever they're doing? I I just don't know. It's it it seems to me like a big part of the character in the comic books, and I haven't read. I don't read comic books. No, so neither. Yeah, take it with a grain of salt because I'm not really. Like, I'm sure a lot of comic book people I think it's 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 a funny mix because we talked about this in our our MCU break episode. There's a lot of times when people think because the comics go one way that the movies are going to go another right. way. And it, but if you've seen all the movies, you know, there is no reason for there to be a registration of all the superheroes because all the superheroes have don't have identities. Also, They're the all fact that um, who they say they are. The fact that the Mandarin was a very different character in the movies and Yeah, things are different. And Quill's dad was not ego in the comics. Right. So, uh but but one of the the elements of Thanos's character in the comic books is that Thanos is almost uh, a self defeatist. He he almost doesn't want to succeed. Um, At the end of this, you see it's taking a toll of him because he didn't right. he didn't know he would have to give up Gamora. And it might be a situation where he's probably not super he, happy about the Black Order either. I just don't think he loved them or anything. Right, and he I think is gonna probably either come back and open up an opportunity to to lose or. Maybe they take a fight to him, but it certainly seems like he is going to he is going to return and get yeah. His but ass I'm just like, what is his role going to be? Is there going to be a different villain? Is there going to be a villain? What no, I conflict, think Thanos is the, still yeah, the villain. If, well, well, no, I mean, like, what if the conflict isn't stopping Thanos again, but trying to set right what he did? And maybe at the end, he tries to stop, undo that, and they stop him. But I, I, I just so much speculation what, what what's this movie going to be about who is going to be resurrected or not who is going to die permanently by the end of that and what is the new status quo going to be like when that is over like i think what now that we know what happens in this movie yeah it certainly seems to me like the theory that you know all these old guard people from the avengers are going to die I some think, of them at least i think some of them are i, I, think I, that I, gonna, I have a hunch thor is going to stick around if the side characters from ragnarok are still alive and yes, uh, and I think that and Black Widow because it sounds like they're trying to get her own movie unless it's a prequel. My, my guess is else that is anybody's guess. My guess is that we still end up with Bucky taking over for Captain oh, America. I, I hope still Bucky think... comes back because that was such an unceremonious death after all he's been oh, through. Yeah, and, and and he's I I think that that character particularly is is still has a lot more to do, and I think you got to see. Um, Cap and Tony, Tony Cap and Tony re- recreate or whoever res- of them dies or doesn't they have to resolve things in the end they have to resolve their their issues which is gonna be nice and, and I think that it's gonna come down to this um, and we'll situation pro- where sure- we probably get rid of all people because I know I, yeah. I'm positive that Robert Downey Jr. whether he dies or not is He's- probably not going to be in many more of these he- movies and Chris Evans whether he dies or right. not he could pull Nick Fury and just be in the shadows Right. They oh, might actually, not kill them, but they might not be around. I got to bring this up because I remember reading what one thing Thanos or someone did that I was actually wondering what would happen in this movie. Apparently in one of the newer comics, someone uses the stone, maybe like the time stone, and he turns him back into the skinny Steve Rogers. Like imagine him being in a situation where yeah. like he still has the knowledge and experience, but he can't fight anymore. That would be an interesting way to, to like end his character. Uh, yeah, that would be certainly pretty interesting. I'm not saying they'll do it, but I was wondering because I was hearing people say, going like, this is a theme about, this is about sacrifice. And I was like, is it not just about death, but about things in your life? It's like, no, it is death, death, death. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'll just put my card table right now. I think Avengers 4 is going to have a lot of time travel. Ant-Man and Captain Marvel and, and Hawkeye will get more promise. And Nebula will too. She was not in this as much as I expected, but she's still alive. Um, 
I'm expecting mm-hmm. Quill and maybe one other Guardian to be resurrected. Uh, I'm expecting T'Challa and Strange to be resurrected. Peter Parker, like I'm saying, there could be a surprise Miles Morales set up. Who knows? Uh, and all the side characters, a lot of those guys could be gone. Like, I think we've seen the last of Falcon, unfortunately. And mm-hmm. and and Witch, Charlotte Witch, and Vision, because Vision died properly, and she's like, her plot arc with him was pretty much done. There's no reason for her to come back. I, I feel like Vision actually does come back and i think that it's gonna oh, be i don't want him to this he got a good arc in this yeah but his i think the the continuation this next one if it's gonna be about trying to bring these people back i think that you can easily resurrect him on wakanda they, oh they and... could also look at his remains for technology from the stone because they're still they were saying like there would still if shuri had pulled it off there would still be he'd be able to survive because there were other parts of him but there could be traces of the stone's power or like I, right, like I feel like they can bring him. They this, can bring him this back. This movie in did a lot of capacity. subvert expectations in terms of death and consequence. I have a feeling Avengers Four could subvert in terms of just its setup about what it's going to be about and how they get to it. Maybe they'll do some stuff nobody ever could have expected to get there. I, I think at the end of the day, the thing that makes that that I'm excited most about the next one is that I am now not that I never was. I needed convincing. I was never on the fence about this, but it certainly seems like. The fact that both of these movies were basically shot at the same time. Yes, they did a Matrix, Pirates, Lord of the Rings, right. Hobbit situation. And and this movie is so good and knows exactly what it's doing that we're going to end up with whatever happens in this next movie. I know that the work's going to be put in and it everything's going to get paid off. Like it better, certainly that, feels because that actually. Yeah, I think it, and I think it will be. I think we're going to get that's going to be our yeah. yeah. Like you well, said, it's going to true grand finale ending for one thing. You're right. I've heard, this, yeah, this I've, heard, is... I've heard maybe people were upset because it feels like it was kind of cut off. It didn't quite feel like that to me as much as bad as I expected, but it is like it is kind of like the end of the first two Lord of the Rings and Hobbits where you're like, this conflict is over, but there's a lot more left to tell. Right. This is a, a situation where um, th- this is obviously a turning point for the franchise. And, and so will the fourth movie. Yeah. And, and even and, more in ways we did. Yeah, this, both, of these, both of these movies are the turning. Like, this is not... A this is not its own movie. Like it, no. it was originally supposed to be part, part one, one and part two. two. But they this is said, definitely they, a part one. But they have well, they've said the reason they they're giving Avengers Four a separate title is like at its core, these are going to be two very different movies. And yes, obviously four will will deal with the ramifications of this, but they felt like it it warranted it its own title. And you know they were saying for like we were holding off for a while on what the title is and the plot details, and now we know why because so much was going to be linked to that last two minutes. Mm-hmm. And now we know why they were so hesitant to like even the press tours. They were only showing like twenty minutes or so. And when they did early screens, you know, they were doing the please don't spoil this, please don't spoil this for others. Let them have this experience. And yeah, I'm sure there's some people who are going to be sobbing. Some people are going to be shaking. But me, and then I think there will be others like what I ended up being. They're just like trying to think, like oh, trying to guess what happens next. What's what now? Yeah, I, and I think whatever the title of the next movie is, it's. It's what? We are. I think no matter what the without whatever the title for this, I think it's going to be. Um, this is this is about bringing these people back. It's about trying to. But it's uh, also going to be about putting a capper on everything up to this point. So some of the characters, right, whatever, we, some of the characters we didn't end up saying goodbye to in this, we're going to say goodbye to in four, one way or another. And I think a lot of the characters that we did say goodbye to, specifically the ones that had their own movies. Uh, no, the ones that. Turn to ash. I think a lot of them are going to yes be brought but I, back. And I, I, I think feel- a lot of the ones. I think that we we are probably uh, feeling the lead like characters who died most likely. The ones that are still alive are probably the ones who will get permanent, who will be permanently acts. gone. Yeah, and I think a lot of the ones that disappeared are only are aren't gone forever. I, like I have said, I still feel like they should cherry pick who they resurrect so that this ending doesn't lose all its impact. Right. I, I but I do. Peter's coming back. Uh, I think that um, Strange T'Challa is coming back. I think Doctor Strange is coming and back. And Quill, I think. I think other Quill's Guardians coming back. Up in the air, but James Gunn has said, "I'm doing one more. I want to be with this main crew." And like, in fact, like they're not bringing back Gamora, Drax, uh, Drax, Mantis, and Groot are up in the air, but Rocket st- are still around. Well, I can see, I can see Drax being brought back and ultimately dying in the next movie. Uh, yeah. I think in Mantis one. and Groot could because be I, I think I, that. Go ahead. Yeah, I think I wouldn't mind seeing like uh, a guard because all of the Guardians movies, a recurring theme throughout every single one of them, including this movie, 
Well, no, no, no. It's that Rocket and uh, Peter are always butting heads, and yes. I would love to see them in this movie. Stop going as... to the captain. Now. Exactly. It's it's every single movie they are always at each other's throat and are and always fighting. And I would me. love to see them being <laughs> and then he puts basically up being called a rabbit like five times. Yeah, I think that this this is uh, everybody always going for her. Ego thought he was a monkey. Uh, Mantis thought he was a puppy. <laughs> Yeah, nobody really, anything, really knows really. who he is. I think oh, it's I will a, say it's a fun the joke. one joke I was always hoping would happen, which is Earthlings reacting to to Rocket. Nope, maybe in the fourth because now he's still there. But um, but you know, it, it, they they did they had other stuff they wanted to focus on. So there you go. Yeah. So yeah, in con- I think we can start wrapping things up now. But in conclusion, this was always meant to be a wildly ambitious, and they also promised heart rending movie. And I think it succeeds at both. Uh, it is technically more niche in that, yes, you need to absolutely watch all the main movies before it. But And it, it's more light on character growth because of that, but it's not devoid of it. The characters who are relevant to this do get a lot more growth. And uh, and it's it's going to leave – its ending is going to leave an impact and so many – you just know that like message boards and school guards are going to be full of here's what I think I think it's going to happen. And just honestly, like it's so in the air. I feel like at this point, every theory is as valid, valid as the other. There are so many different variables and possibilities. And so I think a lot of us could end up partially right, but I don't know anyone who could be completely right. Yeah. It, it's going to be interesting. Not even interesting to see. I'm, I'm legitimately excited to oh, see yeah. what happens next. But I still think uh, this is, I, I, I will still say I think this was a satisfying movie on its own. It just it ends on enough of a note to leave you you're going to be interested and wondering and eagerly awaiting how does this all wrap up? Mm-hmm. And it and, is the and first half of the story. And yeah, and you're gonna you know hopefully like the nice thing about this it, it certainly feels like a lot of the last couple this one were more fun and lighthearted because yeah, this was going yeah, to get so dark to go from Ragnarok to the opening scene was a bit like, wow, totally to completely different. And I think that, uh, even coming down from this, they're like, wow, that was really, we're going to have some fun leading up to it. And then it's going to get, and then we're going to have some fun with it. Like we're going to have a humor. comedy. after. There is still a lot of really funny stuff in the first, the first two thirds of this do mainly feel like the same tone as the first two Avengers movies, except for when the key deaths happen. Yeah. And there, there is a little bit of the. I will say, I feel like there's a little bit of the tonal whiplash that the first Guardians had, but there was still so much to deal with that it, it didn't. It's not like it left me a ton of time to dwell on it because they're good at make at moving you on. Pacing was good. The slow moments had had impact. Like I was saying, that 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 scene with uh, Thor and Rocket, I just love the fact that they gave Thor even more time than a rag and a rock to let it out. Like I'm kind of shook up, and man, I fell for him. He's trying oh, to put a brave face, but he has everyone he loved is dead. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, it's that that scene. It really is like this this moment where he finally lets it out. Like he kind of been, he hasn't really reacted to any of these deaths. Yeah, the most in other movies has, has been going moment. no when someone dies. Now it's like here's the actual grieving. He's kind of he's kind of like met with this moment where he has to kind of think about it for a second and realize that we have any. Yeah. He is. He's like, I have nothing left. I, that's, that's why I hope they don't kill him. Cause I'm like, I want him to be able to find, to build the new life in Asgard. He was, that's what, that's what Ragnarok was setting up. And that's why I'm like, man, those side characters, and there have to be a few left out there. Otherwise that ending was all for nothing. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. They, they, they threw some dark shit at us in this and they might throw some dark subversions like that. Um, but I was I I mean it probably goes without saying we've 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 on this show talked every recent MCU movie as it's come out from I think uh uh actually we what came out before Guardians um because we skipped Guardians two we meant to talk about it, we never got around to it, but everything after that we've talked and I'm sure we'll do another spoiler cast on part two I would love to have you back for that honestly um, I would love to be here for maybe it. Chris we want to join us we'll see he is just. Because, because yeah, wind things down now. Um, I promised the end of the last episode. I don't know if you heard Tyler, but we're episode twenty-seven. We've done. A, we've. I had the idea for a fun theme because we always take turns picking the main topic. I was like, tell mm-hmm. Chris, pick something that's kind of obscure but means a lot to you, and we'll review it. So he picked the '80s cartoon Little Nemo in Slumberland. 
Uh, okay. That was a fun one. And I'm picking for episode 27, which will come after this, uh, the French cartoon Dragon Hunters, which 99% of Americans have never even heard of, but I love it. And uh, Chris has, I've you know emailed him links and stuff, but he is just, he's honestly been super swamped with work lately. And he's, we are aiming to record in another week or two, but please bear with us. Real life takes priority over fun podcasts. Uh, and say, use this episode to set your appetite in the meantime. We still ended up with decent length. Uh, Tyler, I've, uh, this is not brown news or anything. Uh, episode 10 is one of my favorite episodes we've ever done. Just everything <laughs> and all the topics we talked about. You, Chris, and I just played off each other really well for the stuff we talked about. And this has been really fun, too. And uh, I'm sure we'll have you back to guests, not just for Marvel stuff, too, but for other other picks. Uh, I'm actually – I am talking with – I'm trying to get some of the other – so Generation Animation has had five co-hosts total at this point. Right now, mm-hmm. it's just you, Felipe, and Dave. Uh, but you also right. in the past had Mark, who was on our uh, – our what was our topic oh our final fantasy episode mm-hmm. and felipe was both for our power of girls and Santa max episodes and uh bianca who i've talked to her and dave because they've not been on yet they are very interested in coming on in the near future so look forward to that people and also check out their back their back uh catalog they've had some great episodes throughout the years uh but again tyler thanks so much for setting the time aside and uh i look forward to i'm i'm, I'm gonna be Paying attention to how everybody just react. I, I expect there going to be a lot of varied reactions to this movie, particularly the end, um, as well as Avengers Four and how it how it deals with the ramifications. Um, I'm sure that what they're going to go with isn't something that'll please everyone, but hopefully it'll make sense in the world justified and stuff. Because I've read them saying like the deaths in this they feel aren't just for shock, but to justify. Like you probably, I guess, I guess Loki has kind of reached his. He's done all he can in terms of interesting plot because he did fully become a good guy by the end. Um, and Gamora was always so closely linked to Thanos, so when his mission was done. But like I said, we'll see. Um, but anyway, thanks so much. Again, thanks so much to Tyler. And just a heads up, just list your Twitter handle and podcast names again real quick. Yeah, uh, my Twitter handle is at Tyleterno, uh, M-O, leader, N-O, no. Uh, that's leader as in like, like leader of milk, not leader yeah. like Captain yeah. America. Yeah, like it's it's Mo and No at the end and that's the best way to remember how to spell it. Uh, if, it if, you, if, if it shows, t- if it says Tyler Swift, there's like a, a cartoon guy at a game show booth. Yeah, that's probably just probably just to search Tyler Swift and look for the cartoon. Yes, uh, yes, that's probably the best way to find me. And your podcast? Um, my other podcast, I do Generation Animation on yep. on the Fan Off Network. I Fan do the Media. breakdown. Uh, yeah, the breakdown uh, is the movie podcast, and Snuffed is our survival podcast. Yeah, and they're all on most podcast feeds in general. Yeah, they're all on iTunes for sure. And I know the breakdown, we are everywhere. If you search whatever your favorite thing to use, just search, you should be able to find it. The way you say that, it's like the breakdown's watching you. It's in your mm-hmm. house right now. Oh, yeah, it's everywhere. It's, it's everywhere. in every dark corner of your mind. Have you ever played uh, Yakuza games? The, uh, which ones? Yakuza. I have not. I'm playing no. the remake I've of the heard first of one, and there's a side feature where one of the side characters, the idea is because it's open world, he'll just pop up in random areas and challenge you to a fight. And he's named Majima, <laughs> and so the name of his missions are Majima Everywhere, because he's like, I'm always watching you, buddy. I'm always watching you. That's pretty I funny. actually drew a fan art of, of some of the main characters, and he's, like, poking his head in from the corner of the page, like, hey. And there's, there's like, a hashtag, Majima Everywhere. So, <laughs> hashtag the breakdown everywhere. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that is it. Thank you, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please bear with us. Episode 27 will be coming out sooner or later. But I am John Flurry, And I'm Tyler Molotrino. And mother... (laughs) I'm dead now. Goodbye, everybody. I guess I'll be left to mourn you. No, call Captain Marvel. Got it. I'll pull out my old my old ass pager. Yeah, I'm sure you still have one lying around. <laughs> you know, I I always remember. Do you ever watch Hey Arnold? Oh yeah, loved Hey Arnold. What the fuck would Big Bob do in today's world? Oh, he this he went out of business. Did they touch on that in the Jungle movie? Yep, it's like oh, the first thing that happens. It. Okay, yeah, okay. he um he is out of business. And that movie doesn't take up <laughs> take place too much longer after the series ended, <laughs> but he's out of business. Yeah, well, I mean, the original show ended in the early 2000s, so it makes sense that he would be starting to have trouble by then.
Yeah. So yeah, he is. Uh, he's closing shop at the beginning of that movie. That's going to be our post uh, credits talk. Our Marvel has Captain Marvel. We have. We have. Uh, hey Arnold. We have Big Bob's beepers. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Please stand by. Recording again. I, I mentioned in the previous episode that I'm doing uh, that. There have been so many reanimated projects. And a lot of them have been about video game cartoons because Chris is doing one of the Kirby anime. Mm-hmm. Or he's involved in it. He could create it. And I was literally about to try and get a Donkey Kong one launch because I love the games and their cartoons. A guilty pleasure for me. I'm not saying it's good, but um, yeah. somebody got it going. And I was like, please let me join this. And thankfully they did. And I actually, if you check my YouTube right now, I tried doing my first drawing live stream um, where I got a shot with uh, Dixie Kong, one of my favorite characters from the games. Uh, so it's just her talking, and I'm trying. I'm just going over like, here's how I do in the software. Here's how I'm approaching this, and that was fun. So I'm gonna be doing more drawing and animation streams. So check that out on the Honkus YouTube channel. But also, I highly recommend you go and listen to it's episode sixty something of your podcast <laughs> where they randomly fan picked that cartoon, and you were so pissed. Yeah, let me find it really quick. Uh, you went on cause... a long rant telling like fuck everything about Bluster Kong. Oh yeah, that was the moment that that broke me. Was the moment that broke Felipe was Food Fight. Yeah, that was pretty bad. Which is funny because um, the animation that looks like the Donkey Kong show. They both yeah, have epi- really bad CG. Episode 63. It, it was a combination of the so terrible and then and the fucking mustache on whatever his You name said is. he was creepy looking. I think Candy he, Kong he is. is I think Candy Kong is the creepiest looking. Like she goes into uncanny valley territory. Well, they're all creepy looking. I, but, I, I yeah. think the villains look okay. The lizards, that translated better for some reason. Oh, it did. Well, I think it's because they're not fur. They're like they're not they as human resembling. Yeah, yeah. I'm not talking about fur. It's about the way their faces look. Like every time you yeah. close up of donkey or diddy or dick skin, I'm like, nope, 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 nope. Yeah, I think that just the the lizardy skin just works better on like well, or the shape of their faces. Because yeah. it's not, it's an animal. But, um, yeah. and th- actually, I'm, I'm so, such a diehard fan of the games. I'm like, they're just, those lizard designs were closer to the games than the monkeys. Like, what was the decision process behind that? Those crazy French people. Because I actually did read, um, and there were, somebody tracked down one of the writers for the show and interviewed her. And she said, because the first season it was done via motion capture, uh, by this French company. And they were the ones who originally wrote the scripts and filmed it. But apparently the scripts were full of filthy innuendo and adult humor. And they had to, like, redo the dialogue as best they could to fit the existing animation. Mm-hmm. Uh, which probably makes sense why in the episode we're doing, one of the scenes is Donkey Kong being framed to hit on Dixie Kong. And for reference, Donkey Kong is adult, Dixie Kong is a child. So they think it's fun to do a, to, a, to make them think, ah, he's a pedophile. <laughs> wow. Right. So fun. Good night, everybody. On that note. <laughs> oh, no, a better note. Banana Slammer. That's a catchphrase. Mm-hmm.